Okay, thank you and welcome. So, uh, at first I'll assume that all of you are working with PHP, right? Okay, who isn't working with PHP? Not currently. Uh, okay, you will learn something useful. Uh, of those of you who are working with PHP, who uses xdebug instead of vardamdai? Okay, and who uses vardamdai? <laughs> okay, reasonable. So, a uh, little, bo little about me. My name is Marian. Uh, I come from Croatia. I'm about nine years in PHP, give or take a few months. Uh, I'm a senior developer in Tricoder, and among other things, I like machine learning, object-oriented code, various optimizations, and that's one of the reasons why Xdebug is here. I kind of like low-level stuff. So, um, although here will not be so much low-level, rather we'll explain uh, some configuration options. Since I have an idea that people don't use Xdebug mainly uh, because they end up uh, having some issues with the configuration options and okay, let's demystify that, let's see how do they affect the overall behavior. Uh, so we'll explain configuration options. After that, uh, I'll give you some help with the troubleshooting. Uh, how would you approach it? And we'll share some tips and tricks. So let's get to it. The most important thing about Xdebug to notice is that when the client makes a request to your PHP server, PHP is the one who is responsible to creating a connection to your ID or whatever you're using uh, as a debugging environment. Uh, through that separate connection, ID and PHP interact. Uh, and uh, after the PHP executes uh, its code, then it sends the response back to the client. This is important to note. Uh, when, does PHP, uh, when does Xdebug try to initiate connection in where to? We'll explore that also. Uh, one of the most important uh, configuration options is Xdebug Remote Enable. First thing to note, there is no D. It's enable, not enabled. People sometimes place enabled and they are confused why does it work. It's enable. Uh, it can be Boolean, uh, it's zero or one. If it's zero, well, yeah, then PHP will not try to initiate any connection. And if it is one, uh, then your debugging, debugger is enabled. Uh, you can check with PHP info or any get xdebug remote enable whether xdebug is included in your uh, runtime and whether remote uh, debugging is enabled or not. So for the rest of the slide, just to be more precise, assume that remote enable is equal to one. Um, so there's a thing called remote auto start, which can be one or zero. In command line, it must be one, and you'll see soon enough why. Uh, so if remote auto start is set to one, then uh, on each and every PHP runtime, or every request, Xdebug will try to connect to some port and some host. And if it's zero, then it will need some trigger uh, to make it establish a connection. So for remote auto start zero, uh, xdebug looks for xdebug session start in your get or post variables, or it looks for uh, xdebug session in your cookie. If uh, any of those is found, then xdebug will try to initiate connection. Okay, now you might ask, where? Uh, we connect, first, there is remote port. This is fixed value, usually it's 9000, you can change it to whatever you want. Uh, then there is remote host. Remote host uh, is also a static value, it's a string where you can answer type P uh, or host where Xdebug will try to connect on the given port above, but of course that's not all. You can also choose whether to connect back or not. Now this option can be one or zero. If this is one, uh, then when a request comes, PHP or Xdebug We'll look for uh, IP address in server environment, for example, uh, remote adder or x forwarded proto, and instead of using remote host, he will override that value uh, with the value that was found in the server environment, and he will try to connect there. So you might guess that remote connect back uh, doesn't make sense in a command line environment, and uh, when using remote, you have to uh, use fixed remote host when you are in command line. That's one important thing. Also, that is not everything. 
there is also, re also remote added error header, which means you can provide a custom header that will hold the IP. For example, you don't want to use a remote added error rather x slash my IP. Then you will configure, configure xdebug to look for x slash x uh, uh, line. Uh, my IP and he will try to find that value in a environment, in a headers and uh, use it to connect uh, to remote. Okay, so how do we approach troubleshooting? Well, first thing, see if Xdebug is enabled. Uh, in some cases, you'll try for 10 to 5 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes and it will end up that you either didn't enable Xdebug or you're not even listening for connections. Uh, those are silly things that take time, so check for those few things. Uh, if you did check all those things and you still don't receive any connections, well, we can do something else. We can start TCB dump or Wireshark or something like that and inspect whether we are uh, trying to connect from our server and whether we are receiving some connections back to us. Uh, so. If there are no outgoing connections, what could be the case? Well, perhaps you didn't trigger your session. If you had X debug set to auto start is equal to zero, then you, have, you need to trigger something. So make sure you trigger connection initiation. Uh, my suggestion is that when you start setting up your debugging environment, uh, use remote auto start set to one. And after that works, if you need to change it to zero, in case you want to have some trigger, uh, then you can change it, but start with remote auto start and that should make sure that uh, you try to connect somewhere. Now, the second problem is, okay, this is a problem. What did I do? Ah, cool. There is a one little button that I didn't know that even existed. So, what if there are no incoming connections? That's a separate set of problems and there can be a lot more happening. For example, you might uh, have a wrong IP that's set up in your uh, INI file. Your port you are listening, 9000 for example, could be behind firewall. Uh, proxy could give you issues. There can be a lot of stuff. So if you take small steps, for example, you see there are connections that are going from the server, but you don't see any connections coming to you, you know where to look. Uh, Let's see a few examples. For example, now we will start, okay, I'm using Docker in all the examples, so bear with me. Uh, we will start a server on port 8888 that doesn't have auto start. And we'll see what happens. We will also start TCB dump. Uh, for the simplicity of examples, I just used it on uh, my local machine, so it will capture only the incoming connections, not the outgoing. Uh, when we make a request, uh, Huh, this is funny. This should be 8888. Uh, just index PHP, and we uh, see that on our server, we do get requests that came to index.php, but now you have to believe me, we didn't see anything in a TCP dump. Okay, what happens if we say question mark x debug remote start? Well, we still see that uh, thingy in uh, access log, but also we get some action in a TCP dump. So now we know uh, the difference be between uh, remote auto start and what happens when we use a trigger instead of when we don't use a trigger. Let's go a little bit further. What happens when we do use auto start? Here we said auto start is set to one. Also, we we'll start TCP dump. When we make a request on index.php, we still see something in access log, but immediately we get some action in TCP dump. Uh, it's not the same image. You can check the ports here. Uh, and the same goes for the remote start in a query argument. You will see that it still appears in an access log, and we do get something in a TCP dump. Uh, okay, that resolves the issue with the connections. Next issue that you could have is a uh, file path on your local machine and the file path on your server may, net, may, may, may not end up the same. So, he, Xdebug or PHP, it has its own perspective uh, where the file is located. Uh, when you 
if you configured everything and you did receive a connection, at that point, PHP, or, uh, I should mention, uh, this is a PHP Storm, I, I wouldn't say feature, but some things that do happen here, I know that can uh, work in a PHP Storm. I, I know if uh, NetBeans or some other ID has the feature because some features are not uh, implemented in Xdebug, rather in a uh, ID. So when a request comes to you, PHP Storm will pop up a new uh, window and tell you, okay, we have an incoming connection. It's coming from this host, from this port. Uh, which path mapping should I use? That's what happens for the web. But uh, in a command line, things go a little different. When you are in command line, there is no server. I mean, you can run a command line with only the PHP interpreter. You don't need a server. So in order to do so, you will need to do some clever thing, which will, I mean, it's not clever, it's something documented, uh, that will explain, uh, that will enable the path mapping. And we'll do that through examples. So example number one, we will run the script under the same file path. This line does that. We are mapping our own working directory onto the server and we tell it your current working directory from the perspective of server is that one. And we will run some file null.php uh, under assumption we are listening for the connections, we will immediately see something like this. So without any uh, server name, without any extra configuration, all you need is remote enable and remote auto start. Uh, considering that IP and port are default and your IP you're connected to is localhost. Okay, let's see what happens when they are under different path. We are changing our working directory to slash app. Now when we run null.php, this is something we get. Uh, and PHP store immediately tells us, okay, I can find slash app slash null. Perhaps you have to use PHP ID config. Uh, that is environment variable in a command line that will he help PHP storm uh, detect which server to use and then it will uh, find proper script to debug. So let's see how does that work. We will first, uh, the, the one extra thing uh, we had to add from the previous example is we said environment variable php ida config is equal to server name equals demo. Now this server name is something that is configured inside of PHP Storm. You will, inside of language and frameworks PHP servers, you can create a new server. This is important, this name must be the same as the name used here. So you, can, uh, you will create a new uh, server name demo. This is not so much important as this part. So where you will say, okay, uh, my project path from the perspective of IDE, it maps to slash app on the server. And now if we run it, we get the same result. So uh, the important thing here to note is if your file path differs from the server and your local environment, you will have to configure a server. If it doesn't differ, you don't have to configure a server. So that's one place less to look out if you're having some issues. Okay, so some rule of thumb. Set up using remote auto start equal to one, so it always tries to connect. Uh, set remote connect back equal to zero, so it uses the remote uh, host as an IP. Uh, and set a fixed remote host. Then, when everything works, turn on remote connect back if needed. Uh, probably you'll use that if I don't recommend using Xdebug in production, but let's say that it's quite expensive for you to ever try to initiate a connection. Well, yeah, then you will say remote connect back, oh, sorry, uh, wrong, wrong term. A remote connect back is, um, uh, for determining IP uh, where will we will connect. So t turn it on if needed and then turn off remote auto start if you don't need it. So PHP uh, will try to initiate uh, Xdebug connection only and only if you specify some trigger. And that's the main part of the troubleshooting. So let's see some tips and tricks that should help you uh, work with Xdebug 
much more uh, efficiently. There are a lot of things that we can do, but there's so little time. So let's see a few things like conditional breakpoints, setting a value on runtime, break on exception, and some parallel execution. Uh, and by that mean you can use xdebug to find uh, errors in your critical sections if your operations are not atomic. So break on certain condition. Let's say that you have uh, this kind of code. Uh, it's a recursive function and you get a bug, you get an error when n equals to 3. So what can you do? Well, you can break on this line, start the debugger, and then resume a program until it reaches n equals 3. But hey, what if there was 1,000 steps? You wouldn't press 1,000 times, uh, resume, resume, resume. Well, uh, xdebug, and this is something that xdebug has implemented. This is a feature of xdebug. You can say break under certain condition, where you can say, okay, break only when n equals to 3. And after we run this program, you, immediate, you will immediately end up in a stack, stack frame where n equals to 3 with all the stack frames uh, below us. So that's one handy thing if you uh, have a bug in your code under certain condition and you don't like to press resume, resume multiple times. Okay, next there is something called marker breakpoints. Uh, I just call them that. There, it's not an official term. Uh, and it's something that is implemented in PHP Storm, but XDebug does not have a native support for it. And it goes a little, little bit like this. Let's say that you have a code that is used all over the code, some function. And it gives you an error. So if you break on that uh, line, you may end up with an issue that you have to resume multiple times your program until it ends up being called from uh, this function used once but has bug. What you can do is something very nice. This line, this uh, breakpoint doesn't have to suspend your program. You can just say this breakpoint exists, but it does nothing. You do that by uh, right-clicking on the breakpoint and removing suspend. That's the first step. Next. On the previous breakpoint, we will also, uh, I believe it's right click and then F8 to get the more screen. We will say that this exception, that this breakpoint is disabled until this, uh, exception, uh, this breakpoint on line 16 is reached. What will do, this do for us is uh, when we run the code, we will immediately end up in a function used all over the code, but from the context of used once but has bug. So th that, that's a handy feature, for example, if you're working with Symfony and, I don't know, um, some exception or some bug is uh, encountered in, um, let's say, event dispatcher that is used all over the uh, Symfony uh, and you would like to break on a certain condition and yeah, then you can say the, uh, in, the, in the event dispatcher there is a marker breakpoint, and then you will create a new breakpoint in your code that has issue. And you will immediately end up there without having to resume multiple times uh, your program. Okay? Next thing um, is something that's also quite useful. Uh, for example, let's say that you are debugging some application, and somewhere in the code you either see that you didn't Prop, uh, set up everything properly or you have some other issues, well, what you can do is, uh, yeah, it's kind of weird, but you can change the value on the runtime. Here we said value equals to zero. In the debugger uh, view, we can change the value to 22, which will send that value back to the PHP. It will be changed to 22. And when we resume our soft our program, you see the value is 22. We did end up in the branch that has a value greater than zero. And we did get a log value. So you can change uh, dynamically values during the runtime. You don't have to quit your debug session, set up everything again, and rerun it. That's one cool thing. And the last thing that I mentioned, ah, actually there are two. Um, sometimes it can happen that uh, in your error log, you only have exception and the request that caused the exception, but you don't have any details like the, the stack trace and so on. Well, what you can do, and this is also a feature of xdebug, uh, you can break on a, you can create an exception breakpoint, which will, when we add exception breakpoint, we want to break on a root exception. 
and here's some code uh, that throws a random exception, five random exceptions. When we run this, uh, you see there is no breakpoint, but we still did break on a line that uh, chose to throw exception. So that's also one nice way how you can uh, debug exceptions and catch them. And uh, lastly, um, this is something that's also quite useful. For example, if you want to demonstrate that you have an issue or explore if whether you have an issue in your code uh, that may not be atomic. Uh, so in order to do that, first, you have to change the simultaneous connections to at least two. Uh, then we will run a Redis server, for example, uh, and we will start two separate scripts in a same scripts in a separate uh, terminals, which will create two separate debug uh, windows. And we can simultaneously click one and uh, step, uh, uh, step over in the one and the second. And we will see that this is the code that we were debugging. For example, you can see that we are getting some value from the Redis, incrementing it, and then setting it. If, the two if this was atomic code and two scripts were run um, concurrently, you would expect two, but we did get one. And this is something that you can, uh, I, I wouldn't say prove, but demonstrate using Xdebug, whether your code has atomic issues or not. And here are the resources from the Docker files that I've been using and the uh, uh, examples that are being used. Uh, link to the slides will be in the QR code at the end. And yeah, happy debugging. Just one, I, they did say this is okay to tell. Uh, we are hiring, we are firm based in um, Zagreb in Croatia. So if you would like to work with PHP, MySQL, and et cetera, et cetera, please uh, email work at recorder.net. And here's a QR code if you'd like to uh, uh, take a picture with your camera, and this is the URL to the slides. So, yeah, thank you, and have a pleasant day, rest of the day. <laughs>